Good morning. By the kindness of God, the patience of our elders, and your patience, I'm able to stand before you today. My honor to preach the gospel of Christ to you. Look in your Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse number 17, Paul said, Wherefore, come ye out from among them, and be you separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, says the Lord Almighty. You will be my sons, my daughters. Chapter 7, verse 1, we're to cleanse ourselves from all types of defilement and to worship the Lord in the spirit of holiness. The words in verse 17, these are the words I want us to talk about this morning. Verse number 17. Come out from among them. Do you realize these words, this thought, is not only found in this passage, it is throughout the Bible. Here, Paul spoke it to the church at Corinth. What did he want them to understand? What did he want them to do? And surely there's meaning for us. When we read this passage, what does God want us to do? What is the meaning for me? How are these words to change my life? How is it to change my thinking? How is it to change my behavior? First, we must understand the words clearly. And the first thing we have to do is look at the background in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse number 9. God's people are about to go into their promised land, that beautiful land God was going to give to them. But there were already people living there. heathen people, unbelieving, pagan, immoral, ungodly, wicked. People who were so depraved, they burned their children in worship to some ridiculous god. Now God's people are about to go into this land. And look what God tells them. He tells them not to learn the ways of the nations in the land. The abominations that these pagans practiced. In Deuteronomy 18.9, God says, don't learn their ways. very critical verse in a very critical moment in their history. Chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verse 3 through 5. As they go into the land, 
these people are so ungodly. God tells them, don't intermarry these people. Don't give your sons in marriage. Don't take their daughters in marriage. I've heard brethren say this was to keep the bloodline pure. That's not true. He tells you why. In Deuteronomy 7, 3-5, He tells you why. God says if you intermarry with these people, you will adopt their religion. How many members of the churches of Christ have married denominational people because they were in love and went right off into denominationalism? Deuteronomy 7, 3 through 5, God says, don't marry these heathen Don't intermarry these, with these people or you will adopt their false religion. 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1. How many of you have given up your religion for some cute boy or for some pretty girl? I'd be ashamed. Give up the only hope you have in life for sexual activity. It happens. First Kings 11 verse, verse 1. Solomon, king of Israel, married many foreign women. Strange women, as the King James says. And he goes on to tell you these were women who didn't believe in God, who worshipped idols. And in verse number four, when Solomon became old, he adopted the religion of these pretty girls. He adopted heathenism. The king of God's people. Jeremiah 10 verse 2. Jeremiah 10 verse 2. The old prophet reminds God's people, do not learn the ways of the heathen. Do not learn the ways of the nations that surround you. Jeremiah 10, verse 2. Back in Deuteronomy 7, verse 3 through 5, God not only said not to marry these people, God said, when you get into that land that I'm going to give you, I want you to throw down their altars. I want their altars to be destroyed. I want you to burn their altars. Those of you who have sympathy for denominationalism, have you never read this passage? Or do you simply not believe it? Don't have any mercy with false religion. God said, when you get into that land, burn it up. Tear it down. Destroy it. I want false religion annihilated from that land. Judges chapter 2, 
verse 2. Judges chapter 2, verse 2. They are reminded of this command to destroy false religion. But in Judges chapter 2, verse 2, we are told <laughs> they did not obey. What kind of excuse do you think they would have made? Well, it's so hard. I love him so much. She is so beautiful. They didn't obey. They didn't tear down those altars. They didn't destroy false religion. They sympathize with it. They ignored it. And then they followed it. That's what will happen to you. You first have sympathy with it, then you just kind of become indifferent to it, just becomes natural for you. Then you adopt it. And then you'll look back on your life and say, I never thought I would be worshiping here. I never thought I would be a denominational person. That's the way it happens. And so God said, destroy false religion. Have no sympathy with it. No mercy. Burn it down. And if you have people who become involved in it, among God's people, and they won't repent of it, God said, put them to death. Put them to death. Am I advocating killing people who don't believe the Bible? Well, of course not. This is just showing us how much God hates false religion. And he says to his people, come out of that. Come out of that. Look in Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52. Verse number 11. God's people have been in captivity because they adopted false religion. They're about to come out of captivity, come back to their beautiful land. And look what God says to them. Depart ye, depart ye. Touch not the unclean thing. That sound familiar to you? These are the very words that Paul used for the church in our text. In 2 Corinthians 6, 17. You see, 2 Corinthians 6, 17 doesn't have New Testament background. It's Old Testament. The very words are taken from the Old Testament. So to understand the New Testament, we've got to understand the Old Testament. God's people didn't destroy that false religion. So in 2 Kings 21, verse 9, 2 Kings 21, verse 9, God says, you have become more wicked 
than the nations around you. 2 Kings 21 9. Can you believe that? God's people became more wicked than the world, more ungodly. That's unbelievable. But it happened. Revelation. 18, verse 4. Babylon is used throughout the Bible for worldliness, for oppression, false religion. In Revelation 18, verse 4, God tells His people, come out from Babylon. Babylon. lest you partake of her sins and her punishment. That word come out in Revelation 18 verse 4, that's the same Greek word letter for letter as you find in 2 Corinthians six seventeen, when he says to the church, come out from among them. So the background is Old Testament. God's people would not listen, so they were punished. So God takes that background and says to us, if we don't obey this demand of God, our souls will be in spiritual captivity. We will be slaves to our sin. It will control us. We will not control it. I've thought for many years churches of Christ are in trouble. One reason is because of our preachers. 20 minute sermons that are nothing more than kind platitudes that could be preached in any denomination. No one is ever offended. No one ever corrects their life. There's nothing to correct. But for various reasons, I'm going to have to do that today. But I want to leave you with this thought. Why? Why? Why do you want to be like the world? Why do you want to dress like them and show things of your body that don't need to be shown? Why? Why do you want to drink with them? Why do you want to dance with them? Why do you want to fornicate with them? Why? Why do you want to be like people who are going to burn for eternity. Why do you want to be like people who oppose God? You can make a change. You can give Him your whole life. Not only believing in Him, but repenting of your sins, confessing His dear sweet name, and being immersed to have your sins forgiven. Or if you've already obeyed that command, but you've wandered back into the world, you need to come back while you still can. While we stand and sing.